Felix here, co-founder of Palantir Cells. Is that good? Is that bad? What does it actually mean? What happened just inside of Palantir that no one's actually aware of? And why is the stock price stuck? And when will it move? There's actually a date. We can look it up. Some real data. I'll show you how to look it up. So watch this video till the end and you'll be a way smarter Palantir investor than uh, everybody else out there. Before we do and get cracking, I want to encourage you to learn one thing. Give an hour of your time and learn how to trade based on rules. The entry setup, the complete exit setup for every single trade, fully automated. So you can do this in a couple of hours a week. Anybody could do it. A child could do this. My golden retriever could do it. And I'll teach 500 people for free on Tuesday. FelixFriends.org slash webinar. Come and join me. Sign up for it. It won't be on YouTube. You've got to sign up for it. And the spaces will definitely go. So FelixFriends.org slash webinar. Did I mention we have a 75% win ratio? If I didn't, well, I just did. Okay. So um, huge um, thanks to um, Amit for putting this out on his uh, Twitter. Um, great ch guy, great channel. And um, what's happened? Well, 2 million Palantir shares were just sold by a company called Mithril GP Limited Partners. And that's, of course, a private equity uh, fund. And how much did they sell? Well, it's $48 million worth or the equivalent of 13% of their holdings. And Peter Thiel is the man behind this. So you're thinking, why the heck would the co-founder of Palantir sell shares? Well, the bulls will argue, well, he still has 87%. He's still bullish. He's still mostly in it. And no, he didn't have a tax bill or something to justify it. He sold. Why? There's one big lesson in this. He sold for one reason. To make a profit. And I actually want to hammer this point home before we get on to the more intricate technical stuff about where the stock price is heading. And there's the real data you can look at as well as what's going on um, with um, revenue in, inside, inside of Palantir. Because so many people out there become these religious leaders on a stock and they kind of marry the stock and they say, whatever happens, I'll never sell this. Why not? Why did you buy the stock? You bought the stock to make a profit, right? I'm not saying you should say Palantir at this point, but I get why, they, why they're selling it. They probably bought it at, you know, a dollar or two or something like that pre-listing and they're making a 10x return. Why not realize a 10x return? So I don't have a problem with it. It's not massively bullish, but I actually want everybody, no matter what stock you own, whether you're a Tesla fan or a Palantir fan or whatever it might be, stock that you're really excited about, you need to write down when you're going to start to sell this. At what X multiple are you going to sell? You need to write that down. You need to define that. And maybe you slice out of it. You take, you know, at X, 5X, you sell 20%. At 6X, you sell 20%. You know, there's a, there's a plan. There's got to be a plan. Those guys have a plan. That's why they may consistently make money. And you might have realized by now the stock market goes in swings and roundabouts. So when you're at the top, take some money off the table, right? When it goes back down, you can always buy it back. So I don't think it's a bad thing, but yeah, of course it isn't glorious. The more people hear about this, well, I don't know, Peter Thiel sells and so on, but um, you know, it is what it is. Uh, they're venture capitalists. People give them money to make them money. It's very, very simple. Now, huge shout out to another one of my Twitter friends. We've never met, we've never spoken. Um, that's like most of my friends. <laughs> um, except for Winston. And um, he ran us through SPACs, and I've never seen anybody break down the SPACs like this and how SPACs are misunderstood. And I'm talking about the ones Palantir is invested in. Right now, Palantir is actually up 17% on the invested amount in the SPACs. So the SPAC disaster investment of Palantir, not such a di disaster, right? They, they sold AD, ADTH and, and Lilium, I trimmed RBT um, and added LIFW shares. Those were awarded, so they give gifted to them essentially. And they've got a new position here in SRFM as well. But the returns, which is this line here, which was a flipping disaster in 2022, is starting to become very, very nice and is now a positive 17%. And that's the shares plus the revenue they're getting from these guys because they actually pay for the service, right? Which is pretty, pretty good. And he walks us through here what would revenue look like of Palantir without the SPACs. And the black bit is without SPACs. 
and these white bits up here are SPAC revenue, actual revenue, money received. So maybe not such a bad investment after all for all the, 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 the naysayers out there. And essentially what they did, which is very, very smart, and I said this at the time, you know, told you so or that. <laughs> In hindsight, he was very, very clever. Um, when he's wrong, he doesn't mention it ever again. That's usually the way it works, isn't it? They invested in 24 different industries, industries essentially for free R&D. And it would just give them an insight and understand how those industries work, which means you can then pitch the big boys and say, look at the problem that you have that we weren't aware of, but we were aware of because of the, the, the startup they were invested in. And therefore, it's kind of free R&D. It's, it's amazing. And um, they don't have to hold on to the stocks stocks that they get given, they can sell them, which is what they've been doing. So every quarter they've been selling these stocks and they still get revenue. They still get paid for their service. So it's pretty much a guarantee that they're gonna make money out of these SPACs. I mean, they're already up. So add to that the benefit of the free R&D and, and really understanding all these industries, I think it's a very, very smart move. So again, a complete thing that is completely misunderstood and SPACs partly went down because interest rates went up so much and in those environments, everybody hates non-profitable tech and SPACs are non-profitable tech uh, all around. Now, what about the stock price? Why the heck can't we break through $20? So $20 is here. I've written on the chart here, call wall $20. What does that mean? There are a million calls sitting up at these, um, this $20 mark. And when it goes close to $20, those calls become valuable. People sell the calls. That depresses the stock price because how does it work? Well. It's, I was going to say it's simple, but it isn't actually that simple. When you sell a call, what happens? There is a market maker on the other side who then sells about 100 shares every time you sell a call. So every time you make money on your calls, you actually depress the share price. So there you go. Next time you buy, you take profits on your trade. Naughty you, you're doing uh, something nasty for the rest of us. But why... Can the stock price go up after today? And I'm talking after today, not today. There's a very, very good reason for that. I want to show you how you can look this up. So go to optionswatch.io. It's a website that we developed, uh, me and one of my, my mentees. I also want to give you a discounted cash flow model, by the way. So if you're still watching here, you'll get that uh, as well. I'll, I'll give you a whole, a whole document for free. You can download. You can log into it. Sign up for the free trial. It's a 30-day free trial, and that'll give you plenty of time to play around with it. And um, what you're then looking at is these lines here. And the green lines are calls, where the calls are positioned. And you can see, look for the biggest line. The biggest line looks a bit like a middle finger, doesn't it? It's sitting at 20. And you can take a call, drag it onto 20. You can click on it. And uh, bear with me here for a second. OI, open interest. That tells you how many calls are positioned there. 31,000. That controls 3 million shares at that price point. That's quite a lot of shares, right? So you can see that's where we're sitting today. And that's why we're not breaking through 20. What about next week? So you just change the date up here to the 24th. Give it a second to load. And then what do you see? The 20 is no longer the big resistance. It's now 21. So the market's moving up for next week. Uh, interesting, hey? And at 20, there's still, yeah, there are only 13,000 call options, whereas at 21, there are, hang on, let's click on that, that there are 20,000. So the market's moving up. And you can do the same thing again for the week after. You can, um, you know, move around. And what do you see? Well, it's moving to 21 and it's moving to 22. So the market is actually getting more bullish the longer, the further out we move. Uh, on the 8th, there is almost no resistance. On the 15th, it's pretty even in the sort of 20s, 20, 21, 22. So what does it tell you? It tells you that actually after today, we have an opportunity next week to move up somewhat. It doesn't mean it has to happen, but it's useful information to have that most people don't realize it's there and it's practically free to get your pulls on it. So, so do, that's what I'd say. There's a little lesson in call walls uh, for you there. Now, what's Palantir really worth? Well, first of all, download the discounted cash flow model that I made, Felix Schwenzerorg slash Palantir. It's completely free. I just want to make people better informed and help people make money. That's really what this is all about. Um, we want to get a million people to financial freedom. So, you know, we got we to keep pushing here, that rock up the hill, but it's, it's, it's good fun. So 
It's a spreadsheet. That says fair value, $21. You're like, no, no, at a zero. I hear you. Okay. You can mess with this. So the first thing you can mess with is this row here called growth. And what is that? Well, it's revenue growth. And you can say for next year, say it's going to be, you know, 25%. Say it's going to be 25% for every year in the next 10 years. Well, that is now a $30 stock. Okay. What's the other thing you can look at? Well, you can look at the revenue multiple and say the company's worth more than eight times revenue. You can say maybe it's worth 10 times revenue or something. And you can scroll down here to row 134 and say maybe it's going to be worth nine times revenue. And then you get to $33 and then so on. You know, you get the idea. You can, you can play with these numbers. Uh, and obviously come up with, with something. Similarly, you could play with the um, profit margin, which I actually think is going to be higher than it is in here. Um, so if we made that, say, 29% across the board, didn't do that very well, did it? Let's try that again. Is that a calculation? That's a calculation. Yeah, let's just do that manually here. Can you see that? We just you can just update this, just update this, mess around with these, and you know you you you're basically going you're going up. Uh, that's kind of the idea with it. So you can play around with it. You can come to up to all sorts of numbers, but really what I look for is not the massively bullish huge number. I just look for like what is the conservative thing here? What if they don't do very well? What's my base case here? And that's kind of what I look at with these. So 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 check that out and um. I, I'd really urge you to come and join me on Tuesday because people who understand how to trade without the emotional drama and you understand how to set up a trade based on rules and then set it up so they can forget about it. It takes care of the profit taking. It takes care of the risk management. Well, their lives are just better. <laughs> it's very, very simple. And, and making money can be fun if you understand how to manage your money. And I think that's really, that should be our number one job. Our number one job should be to be a, a great money manager. So, so check that out. And if you enjoyed this uh, little update, um, I'll post a much more in-depth Palantir deep dive here, which I'd encourage you to watch because it's got in it some really important dates that you're going to want to mark into your calendars. So check it out. Thanks for tuning in.